Okay, at this time I'll call to order the Board of Commissioners regular meeting for June 17th, 2019. Our first order of business will be the Pledge of Allegiance, and after that I'm going to have our Chaplain, Reverend Patrick Womack, to come forward for our invocation. So if everyone would please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father in heaven, as we admire these mighty Blue Ridge and Balsam Mountains which lift their heads unto you, we thank you that we have the privilege of bowing our heads and seeking you in prayer and asking your blessing on this gathering. We pray, Lord, that you will guide these, our commissioners, to make good and wise decisions in accordance with your good counsel. And Lord, please bless and inspire all of us that we may seek to serve and be of benefit to our community for which we are so grateful. Thank you for these who are here this evening representing those who have stood in the gap and been willing to defend us against our enemies, both foreign and domestic. And we ask you to bless us as a nation, O oh Father, to keep us safe and grant that Haywood County in particular may stand as an example to the rest of the nation and to the world, that we may live as a free people, honoring those who live within our borders and seeking you in all things. We ask your blessing, for we pray in your name. Amen. Hey, thank you, Reverend Womack. Our next order of business is our public hearings, but we have none for, for this meeting. And then our next uh, item of business is the public comment session. I have three people to sign up to speak. If you haven't signed up, you can speak after the three that have signed up have spoken. Uh, if you would, limit your comments to three minutes. And Candy will, uh, on the podium here, there's a red and a yellow and a green button. So the green's good, the yellow means you need to finish your comments, and the red, if you would, please stop you. It means your time's up. So. Uh, if, uh, is there anything, I guess that's, okay. You're, you're good on with that, okay. Okay, so our first uh, person to sign up to speak is Carla Wood. Good evening, I'm Carla Wood. I've lived in Haywood County 25 plus years, the last 16 years working here as an attorney in criminal and family law. There's a relatively new program operating here in Haywood County that impacts us all greatly and information desperately needs to be shared about it. It is the first appearance program. It is a pilot program that will hopefully be used nationwide in rural counties like ours. The first appearance program reinforces our most basic tenet in the criminal justice system of innocent until proven guilty, while at the same time helps prevent felony level crimes from occurring in our community. How does it do this? Data-driven evidence now shows that if someone charged with a misdemeanor crime, say shoplifting, stays in jail until the first court date or even just a few short days, within a little over a year's time from the resolution of that, that same person will commit a felony level, much more serious crime. Bottom line, by keeping somebody in jail who is not yet convicted, we make them into a more serious criminal for our community to have to deal with. So the program gets those people who meet certain standards out of jail so they can keep their jobs, homes, and children until their matter is handled in court. Who is involved? Our police, our jailers, our judges, magistrate, district court, and superior, our criminal clerks of court, the district attorney's office, and the first appearance attorneys. Why should you care as a commissioner and a generally law-abiding citizen? You have the first two already stated reasons, general principle of innocent until proven guilty, lessening major crime in your county. Then there's the icing on the cake. It saves money. We all know the saying that crime doesn't pay, but what the real saying should be is crime costs. Besides the what I'll call the individual, emotional, and personal cost of crime, say insurance, repairing a car, getting a new phone, there's what I'll call the collective cost. It costs the citizenry to protect itself from crime by hiring, training police officers. There's great expense in jailing them, about $70 per day per inmate for guards, food, health care, and the jail itself, the actual building. 
the First Appearance Program helps the sheriff reduce the number of people housed in jail, and this is a huge issue about to face the county, the expense of an up-to-standard, up-to-date facility. A new jail will cost millions of dollars to build. That cost will be borne by the tax-paying voting citizens of Haywood County. In its first fledgling months, the First Appearance Program already helps keep the annex from having to be used as often. That calculates into money saved. So, I ask you to please educate yourself about the program. Again, that's the First Appearance Program. You can ask me, you can ask the district court judges, um, superior court judges, get behind the program, give it your support, and help us save um, our county. While we may not be able to avoid the cost of a, a jail facility, we certainly can delay it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wood. Hopefully the newspapers will do an article on that. <laughs> okay, our next person to sign up to speak is Jesse Lee Dunlap. Hey there, y'all. I got hired to do post-service outreach through the Department of Health and Human Services grant. And I would just want to come and update y'all about what was going on with that. So the first few months were primarily just relationship building and um, you know, establishing a relationship with the ER at Haywood Regional. So they, now they just call me up as soon as somebody comes in there with a substance use issue. And we decided when we had the initial ER meeting, ER staff meeting, that we wouldn't just address the opiate overdoses, but the alcohol issue is actually exponentially larger than all the other substances combined. So we're doing everything from like alcohol, meth, and, and, and opiates, and everywhere in between, because it's all, most folks are poly substance users, just as a fact to throw in there. But we've got a great relationship with the ER over at Haywood Regional. We've got some local clergy on board, with the harm reduction message, the Waynesville PD has been awesome. The county sheriff has been awesome. The folks running the detention center, Pathways, Open Door, all those folks are like on board with harm reduction. And um, now that the hospital is calling, they call a lot. Actually, I'm going to scoot out soon and make these comments because I had somebody in crisis call me on the way here. So, in addition to the post reduced outreach position, I do syringe access as well. And just to give you a scope as far as like numbers, we order as much syringe access supply as Raleigh does currently, and we haven't even scratched the surface as far as folks we're serving. Um, and speaking of numbers, the billboard on, over at Lowe's that has overdoses is like far lower than what actually happens in the county. Like it says, usually between like one and six, but what's reported from individuals that have like used Narcan on their friends and family is like way higher. Plus, that's only what I ask about. I'm like, do you have any overdose reversals to you know tell me about? So, getting Narcan into the community has been life saving. On a, um, I mean, I don't even have a number for that. So, um, I did hear that Waynesville or Haywood County is in the big pharma. Suit, I think Zeb Smathers told me that. So. We are, we are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool, okay, that was really good to hear and I'm hoping that whatever money comes with that will be used on treatment because we've got more resources than some counties but it's still greatly lacking. So um, I actually had a friend from the Netherlands who's worked in harm reduction in the last 20 years come and give a pre presentation at Folk Moot recently and uh, how, how his city addressed rampant drug use and homelessness. Basically, it costs a third of what it does to incarcerate people as to con comprehensively address substance use. So if you house, feed, and medically assist folks, a third of the cost. So um, up next for the remainder of the grant is more relationship building, engaging more churches, engaging more rural fire departments, community centers, and educating folks that substance use disorder does have a medical treatment. And I think, am I out of time? Well, you know, you can go ahead. I, so you're with the county. This yeah, was it's the a joint position between the North Carolina Harm Reduction Coalition right. and the health department. This was the grant that we voted on a few months ago. Yes, that, and I just okay. wanted to come update y'all on it. So. Oh, okay. Should she be on the agenda? 
I mean, okay. I just I, I just thought about it a few days ago. Like, oh, I need to come. You know, okay. it just occurred to me. I was like, I could come and tell y'all what's going on. So. Okay. Appreciate if you want to, yeah. If you want to, if you've got more information, I think if you could get on the agenda, um, just just call and talk with Candy. Sure. And because, yeah, uh, and that's fine because I understand you're just trying to. It's going to be another month before we meet because in the July we only meet mm -hmm. once. So I, I'd like for you, I'd like for you to be on the agenda, and maybe just do a ten-minute presentation, maybe. Totally. And you can, yeah, and you totally. can go over what what all you you know, and maybe what all you need to do to, you know, the hey, I'm thinking of the Haywood Health Foundation. This seems to me to be isn't it, Kirk, something that they could look at. Sure. Uh, fun, doing some more funding because it sounds like you need some more people. Totally. Yeah. That's what I was getting ready okay. to say in the rest of this okay. is. Um, a lot of that. So. Right. Yeah. So you're saving lives, and we appreciate that. Well, yeah. thank you for having me. Okay. I'm going to leave okay. my information with y'all. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay. Thank, thank you, Jesse. Jesse, uh, this was a grant that I was just going to explain. This was a grant that we got and that we approved. Uh, a few months ago and it's already making a difference so that's that's good and the state sponsored that so our next person to speak under public comment is monroe miller hmm. my public comment uh, is regarding perceived uh, bidding irregularities with the david francis uh, dirt spreading project um, dirt convey could Dirt Convoy could be a catalyst for Jake Creek track, wrote Becky Johnson in the Mountaineer on June 12th. There was a public bid opening on Thursday, June 6th, in this very courtroom by David Francis and another unnamed individual, presumably from McGill Associates. Four contractors bid on the project to haul, spread, and compact more than 3,000 dump trucks, loads of dirt on the 22-acre tract in Jonathan Creek, she wrote. Bids were open last Thursday in the Haywood County Historic Courtroom with some of the bidders present. Um, that was the last time those bids ever saw the public light of day. Since then, I've made two public record requests from the county, specifically from Bryant Moorhead, to inspect those four bids and for the bidding documents, Jonathan Creek Soil Reclamation Project, which was generated by McGill. I'm told that the county does not have copies of the bids. McGill has possession of the bids. Uh, Brian Moorhead, during a meeting with him Thursday, June 13th, wondered if those bids were even public documents. I requested that he contact McGill and have those documents scanned by McGill, sent to Candy Way, and have her send those to me by the close of business day, Friday, June 14th. I had, I've got nothing. Additionally, when I requested a copy of the bidding documents, that document, the, the document the bidders used to respond to this bid, I was informed that that document, which had resided on the McGill website, had been taken down. The county did not have a copy of those bidding documents, I was told. This bidding process appears to be in total lockdown, orchestrated by David Francis and McGill, to intentionally thwart any public inspection of those bids. Why didn't the, copy make, why didn't the county make a copy of the bids prior to handing them to McGill? Was this intentional or simply incompetence? McGill is presumably analyzing the, the bids and will produce a bid tab, a bidding tabulation in which they will determine who the best bidder is. That is their, in their contract to do this, Bryant Moorhead informed me that the recommendation will be submitted to county commissioners for approval. Why didn't the county analyze those bids, I asked? Well, according to Bryant, this is not like bidding a Dodge truck. It is too complicated for us. The problem here is that McGill is a vendor and not subject to a public records request, and the county seems powerless to receive these bids and bidding procedure from McGill. McGill does a lot of engineering contracts and could potentially stand to gain depending on which vendor is finally selected, but not limited to doing, um, but not limited to doing engineering work for the selected vendor. In order to eliminate even the appearance of impropriety, McGill, a single source engineering company for the county, should be ordered to produce all four bids and put the bidding documents back on their website. Since Brian Moorhead appears either unwilling or powerless to extract copies of these bids from McGill, I am now seeking assistance from state authorities to obtain these bids 
a procedure I had used in the first bidding process. I'll let you know what happens. I appreciate your allowing time for me to express my concerns. Okay, thank you, Mr. Miller. Is there anyone else that would like to make a public comment tonight that's here? Okay, seeing no one, I'll close the public comment session. We'll move on to constituent concerns, and I'll start with Tommy. Have you got any constituent concerns that you want to bring up? Uh, not at the moment. You may come back. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, you? I have, but I've took care of those. Okay. Hurt. I, I don't have any. I, I do appreciate Carla Wood coming and, and speaking about the first appearance program in, in Jesse Dunlap uh, regarding the, um, what, what, I guess, harm, North Carolina Harm Reduction Coalition. Um, I think, you know, both of those things are, these are issues that we certainly need to address in our community. I mean, lots of times we don't want to address those things, but um, I'm, I'm about town a lot and, yeah. and see the evidence of that, and, and we certainly need to address those things. And I appreciate and applaud the folks that are out there on the ground and trying to do that. That's all. Okay. Mark, you think? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I do appreciate uh, Jesse coming in and Carla you, for you coming in. Um, we've, I know one of the things she said was that alcohol was a big problem, and, uh, and that's what we've heard uh, also. And I forget where it was. I just remember, Tommy, you remarked on about that. So. Yeah, the alcohol deaths were very similar to the opioid deaths. If I recall, it was 18 when we approved that grant. There have been 18 opioid deaths at that time and 15 alcohol acute alcohol uh, deaths, I think the numbers, if I remember the numbers correctly, and uh, that was the grant that we approved in December, if I remember correctly, yeah. and uh, yeah. I think when we did the numbers on that, if we could mitigate, was it three, three repeat overdoses, uh, that grant would far more than pay for itself because of medical expenses in emergency room. Uh, yeah. expenses. Yeah, that's that true. Nature. That's true. Okay. Okay. The next item of business is administrative <laughs> agency reports and presentations, and we have none of those tonight. The next item of, of, for discussion is the discussion or adjustment to agenda, and I don't have anything. Does anyone have any, any discussion or adjustment to the agenda? Okay. The next item of business will be the consent agenda, and this is a very long consent agenda. I'll try not to... It's going to take a while for me to read it. So I'm going to read the consent agenda, and then at the end, when I'm finished, uh, if you have any questions, we have staff here to answer any questions that we may have. So if you would, I'll just go ahead and start reading these. The, the consent agenda, the first is the request approval of the June 3rd, 2019 regular meeting minutes. Second is the request approval of budget amendments from the general fund for C culture and recreation library, which is $1,113. These are funds received from the North Carolina Department of Cultural Resources for costs associated with travel to the library Evergreen Conference. The next item is that from the general fund, public safety, animal <clears throat> services. These are donations rece received for the spray neuter program. And so folks donate to the uh, spay neuter uh, program and uh, we, we pass that along to the animal services and we appreciate that. The next is the capital project fund which are county projects and this is uh, one is EMS it's $233,563 is a transfer from the general fund to the capital projects fund for ambulances purchase that must be built in order and will not and ordered and will not be completed by June 30th. The next one is a capital project fund, county projects, facilities and maintenance, $112,890 to appropriate to the law enforcement center renovation estimate from the current year funds in the facility and maintenance budget to move the law enforcement center projects that are not expected to be completed by June 30th into a multi-year capital project fund. Now, those, uh, those, we're moving the funds that we've already approved into a capital fund so that uh, because the budget year is going to end before these get done and so we're just moving those over for that purpose. The third request is to request approval of amended ambulance service regulations and ambulance operated franchise ordinance 
we had a public hearing at the last meeting for that, and so that's what is, now is the time to vote for that. The fourth request is the request approval of fireworks displays for Chestnut Ridge Event, Event Center on August 31st, 2019, September 14th, 2019, October 2nd, 2019, and November 10th, 2019, and the fireworks display for the town of Maggie Valley and Lake Junaluska on July 4th, 2019, and the town of Canton on July 5th, 2019. So if people want to see fireworks, they can see them on July 4th and July 5th this year. Also, we have the request approval of the 2020 census resolution, and the, the gentleman was here from Atlanta from the uh, census uh, last time to explain that. The sixth is the, from the, these are, uh, the following are from the sheriff's office. It's the request approval of the sheriff's annual contracts over $20,000 for the fiscal year 2019-2020 to be paid from budgeted funds. The first is the sheriff's attorney, David Wajikarama, annual fee in the amount of $31,243.92. Next is from the communications and from Southern Software, which is computer-aided dispatch in the amount of $20,970. Next is the priority dispatch, license renewal, service, and software support in the amount of $21,600. Next, Mobile Communications America, a AVTEC consoles and 911 center in the amount of $30,153.23. Next is CenturyLink, which is A911 circuits and 911 phone system in the amount of $40,266.91. Next is the, from the detention is the IDEMA MorphoTrack equipment and support for fingerprint machine in the amount of $22,000. Next, from Cisco is inmate food services in the amount of $170, $170,000. Next is from Southern Health Partners, inmate health care medical services in the amount of $213,252.48. All right, that's for the, that, those, all those were with the Sheriff's Department. Next is the request approval of the fiscal year 2019-2020 cleaning service contracts. The first is Donna Troll doing business as Troll's Cleaning Services for the Law Enforcement Center for an annual amount of $21,750. Next is Affordable Housing of Western North Carolina Incorporated for the Historic Courthouse for the annual amount of $56,000. Number eight is the request approval of resolution to accept a $50,000 state reserve grant from the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality to study Haywood County water resources during critical times and emergency crises. Uh, approval from McGill and Associates to perform, to perform said study in the amount of $50,000 and approval of a budget amendment to appropriate the amount, $50,000 of the grant. And last is the request approval for increase in audit contract due to the North Carolina Office of State Auditor requiring the inclusion of the Medicaid eligibility testing audit within the annual contract for counties. So does anyone have any questions on those items in the consent agenda? And if you do, we have staff here, so. Okay, <clears throat> okay hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, is there any other discussion, any discussion at all? Okay, those in, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? Okay, that passed unanimously. Okay, we move on to our regular agenda. Uh, is to request approval of the Haywood County Home and Community Block Grant funding for fiscal year 1920. Uh, and approval of bid in, uh, for in-home aid to provider and consumer customer, I'm sorry, and consumer directed pilot for the in-home services. And we have the Southwestern Commission Area Agency on Aging Director, Sarah Jane Melton. Sorry, <laughs> how are you, Mary Jane? I am Sarah Jane Melton. I am the director of the Southwestern Commission Area Agency on Aging. And um, every year about this time, I come um, to talk with you all um, to receive a recommendation, to provide you with a recommendation from the Haywood County Home and Community Care Block Grant Committee. Um, we are required um, because the service provider for the in-home aid service two 
in Haywood County is a for-profit agency. We are required to submit that out for bids every two years. And um, so that is what we have done. And I come to you with the recommendation for interim services, interim agency out of Asheville to continue to provide that service for Haywood County. That is a recommendation from the committee. Um, that's the first recommendation. Um, the second recommendation is to approve the funding levels as you see in the um, attachments that have been provided to you to Mountain Projects, HHS, as well as interim. And then we also are recommending that a new pilot program, Consumer Directed Services, um, there I think it's about a $13,000 amount, um, be piloted under my office, the Area Agency on Aging for Haywood County. That's a little bit of a different service. It would be, cons as, it's, as it is called, consumer directed. It would be for in-home age services, folks that are capable of managing their own care. Um, it's very person-centered, whole, whole person-centered, um, that they would be able to have that ability to manage their own care. Um, so we are piloting that in three of the, three of the seven counties across the region, and we um, have that recommendation from the Block Grant Committee. And I'm happy to answer any questions further. This is recurring funding that comes out of the Older Americans Act for Haywood County. Okay. Which, which three counties is that, if you don't mind? Sure, Haywood, Jackson, and Clay. Okay. And, you, and this helps people stay in their homes. Yes, is, it Which does. is the goal, be, instead of being in a facility, which costs a lot of money. And it saves taxpayer money because they're being, and, and they're at home, which helps them always want to be at home. <laughs> exactly. So. All of the services, these are all community-based services. All of this money goes to community-based services throughout Haywood County. That's correct. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for Sarah? Here now, I'll entertain the motion that we request the approval of the Haywood County Home and Community Block Grant funding for fiscal year 1920 and approval of bid for in-home aid to provider and consumer directed pilot for in-home services. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Uh, okay, that's approved. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. I would also like to thank you all for your understanding the, of the need for adult protective services, um, particularly in Haywood County. And we were going to walk. <laughs> yeah. I think there's a few still out there. That's why we're in the Elders Matters shirt. But that is something that's happening across the region. Um, the seven southwestern counties walking simultaneously. Yeah. And we appreciate your support of that. Okay, and well, maybe since it's rained, it'll be cooler, a cooler walk. Well, right? you never know. You <laughs> never know. Thank okay. you. Right. Thank you. Okay, and I, I wanted to back up to the consent agenda. I just wanted to say, even though we read through all these, we get this on Thursday, and everybody has, gets to read through them. So, and Julie does a great job in, in the explanation area to let us know what that's exactly for, and then the public can view all those, so. I know we moved through them rather fast, but that's to speed up the meeting. Okay, our next, uh, our second item of the regular agenda is the presentation of Presidential Volunteer Service Award to the Haywood County Sheriff's Office Citizens Patrol and the Haywood County Honor Guard. And we have uh, at the uh, Smoky Mountain Outreach Foundation Chair, David McCracken here tonight. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, and I think we just hit that spot on, right at 1800 by my watch. Uh, so started during the President George Herbert Walker Bush administration, the Points of Light program recognizes volunteers who perform national and community service with the specific goal of encouraging citizens to live a life of service through presidential gratitude and recognition. Today we honor two groups here in Haywood County that have met the criteria for such recognition. I am the chair of the Smoky Mountains Outreach Foundation, a local nonprofit organization in Lake June, Alaska that supports veteran-related programs and high school junior ROTC leadership development in the seven westernmost counties of Western North Carolina. The Outreach Foundation is also a certifying organization for the National Points of Light program and is pleased to have Chairman Kevin Ensley present these Presidential Volunteer Service Awards to two groups each comprised of veterans from Haywood County. The first award is to the Haywood County Sheriff's Office Citizens Patrol that has been initiated by Sheriff Greg Christopher in early 2018 to provide additional eyes and ears throughout the county. 
An additional goal of the Citizens Patrol is to interact with community watch programs in neighborhoods throughout the county and also to encourage neighborhoods to create community watch programs in coordination with Lindsay Regner and the Sheriff's Office. Three local veterans initially stepped forward to support the effort, Mike Good, myself, and Max Wicks. More than 100 hours of volunteer service, the Citizen Patrol earns the group bronze level recognition. And I will note that the recently, very recently, as in this past week, the uh, number of volunteers has doubled to six. So we're at, we're, we're, we're at least to take some route. Uh, within this presentation frame that we're going to uh, present here in a matter of seconds are three items that make the Presidential Volunteer Services Award. A certificate naming the group to be recognized and the level of award achieved for that year. A letter signed by President Trump with thanks for the volunteer service and a coin for the award level. Additionally, each member of the group will receive a lapel pin that is a smaller representation of the presentation coin. So if I could get Major Smiley and uh, Chief, Dep Chief Deputy Haynes and my two colleagues, uh, Max and uh, Mike, to come on down. You want to? So where's your best photo op? You want to get everybody? That's fine. Okay, so uh, with that then, um, we're now going to have the, uh, and, and if I could ask you guys to start coming, you're going to be much slower to get on out here, so we'll make the move while we speak, if you will. <laughs> and, and this is then the second award is for another volunteer group that is comprised of uh, veterans from two separate organizations here in the county. And hence, there'll be two framed awards presented tonight. The Haywood County Honor Guard performs the extremely valuable function of providing military honors for veterans being buried in Haywood County. You may be surprised to learn that Haywood County has more than 5,600 veterans, and the Honor Guard often performs more than 18 services a month, rendering military honors earned by the deceased veteran. The 13 members of the Honor Guard being recognized this evening have achieved the Group Presidential Volunteer Service Award at the highest level, gold, for more than 1,500 volunteer hours during 2018. Uh, the commander of the Honor Guard is Rick Strubeck. Rick also chairs the Haywood County Veterans Council that meets monthly in the Senior Center. The Honor Guard itself is comprised of veterans who are members of North Carolina American Legion Post 47 and Veterans of Foreign War Post 5202. Many of the Haywood County Honor Guard are members of both posts and these 13 individuals will each receive then the gold lapel pin for their individual recognition. And they are, and now you can come forward if you will be so kind, Chris Anders, Ellen Arrington, Eddie Barton, Jack Cronin, Jim Danick, Richard Harris, Jody Keller, Pat McLean, Chris Peralt, Ron Rookstool, Bob Sager, Rick Strubeck, and Jerry Warren. I've got the lapel pins for you all, but in the meantime, Chairman Ensley, please present the Group Gold Level Presentation Award, one frame plaque to Rick Mull, the Vice Commander of North Carolina American Legion Post 47. Yes, sir, other than that one, one yeah, they're, 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 you got the right one. And they're the same otherwise. The second frame plaque to Terry Browning, Commander of Veterans of Foreign Wars Post 5202. 
give you guys your uh, pins here. Pins. As, as, as the group moves back to their seats, just let me close with the Smoky Mountains Outreach Foundation sincerely thanks Chairman Ensley and the Haywood County Board of Commissioners for taking time during this meeting just after Flag Day to recognize these volunteer veterans for their continued selfless service. Thank you. Okay, we'll, we'll let them exit as we, we'll just take just a second or two of, of a break and let them exit. It's not working. You know? It sound like it. Yeah. It's not working again. <clears throat> Mine is. It's, it's working. I think it's working okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me in the back? No. I even check. My yeah. is working a little bit. I'll just talk to you. Okay, can y'all hear me now? Is that better? Okay, I think it's just allowed. I, I do want to say, I know David's not in here, but David McCracken, I appreciate him putting this program together because he did a lot of work, I know, to get that, to get the program together and, and to have it organized and everything and, and get everybody here. So we appreciate David and him uh, doing, doing the work he did. Okay, our next item of business will be the request approval of the Haywood Community College certification as to the availability of local budget control and funds for the proposed Health and Human Services Building pending LEGC loan approval. And we have our uh, HCC President, Dr. Barbara Parker, and HCC Director of Campus Development, Breck Lanning, here tonight. So if y'all would come up. Good evening, Chairman Inslee, Commissioners. Can y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you this evening. About a year ago this time, we came to you and asked for your approval for our Health and Human Services project, which at that time you granted. We moved forward and quickly realized that our bond money, $2.83 million, uh, was not enough to construct that Health and Human Services building. As you are well aware, the Haywood Healthcare Foundation has committed the funds to make up the deficit for the building that we would like to build. And so what you have before you is an amended project request. You will see on page three of that project request the outline of the funds, and you will see the un under uh, Roman numeral four, sub subsection A, 
that the Haywood Healthcare Foundation funds have been identified, uh, along with our bond, fund, bond funds, excuse me, for a total of seven million two hundred sixty-six thousand dollars. So that is the first amendment. Then the last page, page six, you will also see has been amended uh, and updated with regard to the estimated operating and utility annual cost. Since the size of that project has increased, it will increase to a small degree the cost of maintaining and the utilities cost. So those are the two amendments okay. to, the, to what you approved previously. Are there any questions? Anyone have any questions for Dr. Parker? Do you have any idea of when you'll be getting started on this? I know the completion, if I remember right, is January of 22, is that right? Uh, Brent, you want to speak to that? I get in trouble when I start giving dates. <laughs> yeah, the hope, uh, if everything goes well on track right now, we're hoping to get started on design in September. Uh, it'll probably be the earliest once we get approvals from the state board. Uh, for state construction, get the uh, design contract worked out. And we're figuring about a year for design time and then a year to a year and a half construction time. So that's that puts us out um, into 2022. Anybody else have any other questions? One comment on the, one of the amendments, Haywood Healthcare Foundation. Thank you. Those are uh, those are amendments that you like to see. Absolutely. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, we've, we've, we've kind of been blessed if you think about it. We've had uh, the Haywood Health Foundation step up for this bill, and then we had for an animal services bill, and we had some citizens step up for that also. So it's really nice to see people taking a, a stake in their community and, and uh, kind of putting their money where their mouth is kind of thing. And I know the, HC, uh, the uh, foundation is raising, is going to be raising money uh, continuously for this project. This is a good project for them to do that with. That is correct. Yeah. We're very grateful to them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions? Okay. Hearing, no, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion that we approve the request of uh, the Haywood County Community College's certification as to the availability of local budget support and funds for the proposed Health and Human Services building pending LEGC loan approval. So moved. Okay, second. Second. okay. Any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay, that's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, appreciate y'all coming. Okay, the next item of business is to request approval of the revised agreement for non-emergency ambulance, ambulance transportation with DLP Haywood Regional Medical Center and approval of the recommended perpetual Medicare allowable EMS service schedule. We have our emergency services director Greg Sheeping and deputy director Travis Donaldson. Welcome. Good afternoon, commissioners. Okay. Um, what we have before you tonight is a perpetual EMS fee schedule um, updated rates. Every year, Medicare um, adjusts their rates, usually in the first quarter, uh, for maximum allowable. Um, what this allows us to do is not leave money on the table with private insurances. Uh, Medicare is only going to pay a certain amount. Um, this amount is um, a lower amount than what we have here with the maximum allowable Medicare rates. Um, this is for private insurances. Uh, part of this fee schedule is also within the um, non-emergency ambulance transport agreement uh, with the hospital, Haywood Regional. Uh, so it is a piece to that, that instead right. of having to revisit each year, we change the verbiage in the agreement so that it automatically updates to those revised fee schedules with Medicare. Okay. And this is what's commonly known for the convalescent transport that we're getting ready to do. Okay. Correct. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for Travis or Greg? Uh, on the, on the, um, so if someone is, does convalescence and they have insurance, then you guys, the insurance is billed, I guess, or? Correct. Okay. And then, and that's just an extenuation of what we already have now. I guess they'll just be a little busier 
Correct. Do, doing those. And how many do you anticipate per day, do you think? Do you, and I guess that's Monday through Friday, maybe? Or? Yeah, it's, it's really seven days a week, but that's the right. slowest day is Sunday. It's more okay. really about six days a week. What do you think it'll average per day, maybe five or six, seven? It's, it's currently averaging, I believe, six calls per day. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Any questions? Okay, hearing none, I'll, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to request approval of the revised agreement for non-emergency ambulance transportation with DLP Haywood Regional Medical Center and approval of the recommended perpetual Medicare allowable EMS service schedule. So moved. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, it's unanimous. Okay, thank y'all. Okay, um, the next item of, <clears throat> of a regular agenda <clears throat> will be number five, will be request approval of the May 19th, refunds, releases, amendments, and discoveries, business personal property auditor, Tiffany Messer. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, I would like to request the approval of the May 2019 refunds, releases, amendments, and discoveries from the assessor's office. Do you want to have any questions for Tiffany? <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Okay, hearing that, I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. And that was the approval of the May 19th refunds, releases, amendments, and discoveries of business personal property. Thank we you. have our business personal property auditor, Tiffany Messer, here to present that. Okay. Thank you, Tiffany. Okay, our next item of, uh, of our regular agenda is to request approval of the May 19th, 2019 tax collections mm -hmm. up, updates, refunds, and we have our tax collector, Greg West, here with us. This Good evening, Commissioners. Good evening. Mr. Chairman, I'm here to request approval of the May 2019 tax collections, updates, and refunds. As of May 31st, 2019, our collection percentage is 97.19%. That's amount collected is $38,673,295.51. We have a remaining balance on the 2018 taxes amount of $1,113,871.46. I'd be glad to answer any questions concerning that. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for Greg? I noticed you're up a half a percent over last year. That's good. Yeah. Um, as far as our refund report for May, we had $952.68 that was refunded. Some of that was due to uh, landfill fees were uh, released, and some people had uh, wrong ownership on a couple of items that comes out of the assessor's office as well. Hey, 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 Greg, I had a question for David earlier this week, and it probably bears repeating since we're on, you know, we get out. Um, if you're a senior, and uh, explain what, what they can do to get their taxes uh, reduced. We have an application. Go ahead. Yeah, excuse me. There, we have an application that has to be filled out by June the 1st. So uh, they would already have, have to had that into our office this year. And it just requires that uh, you provide your income, a tax return for 2018, and you can only make over $30,200, and that's just income. It doesn't count your assets. And if you qualify for that, uh, you get, a, I think it's around 50% maybe discount on your, on your taxes, and you're not responsible for the landfill fee as well okay. in that program. So we try to tell as many people as we can about that uh, that come into the office. You'd be surprised that there's how many people don't realize that we have that program. And uh, it could be very beneficial to a lot of the senior yeah. citizens in this county. Okay. And you have to be 65 or older. 65 or older. And we're yes. on disability, I believe, if you're 
Uh, we, there is a disability exemption as well, but okay. uh, it's not, these are two different. We have veterans as well, so there's really three programs there that we have that, that would help. Okay. Greg, if you don't mind, just uh, a quick summary on the veterans piece of it. I mean, I was asked that probably about a month ago from a constituent, so if you don't mind to touch on that a little bit. On the veterans? Yes, sir. Okay, I might have to ask Tiffany to help me on this a little bit if she doesn't mind. It's, it's a just, just some basic, you know. Yeah. We would, receive. Uh, would, would Tracy know anything about that? Tracy could tell us a little bit, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, come on up. <laughs> the veterans exemption doesn't have an income limitation, so it doesn't matter how much money they bring in. Um, they still do get charged the landfill fee, but it's $45,000 reduction from their overall value. Okay. So, and the disability one um, is the same requirements as the elderly. Um, there's just a certificate from, um, like your physician would have to sign off that you're 100% disabled. Okay, and, and you, do they have an income requirement? Yes, it's the same as the elderly. Okay. It's 30,000, um, I think 200, yeah. yeah. Does the disability have to pay the landfill fee? Or? No. Oh, okay, but the veterans do. Right, I okay. think it's the difference is because of the, in, there's no income right. limitation there. Okay, so. okay, okay. So what, what length of service qualifies for the veteran? And they have to be 100% um, disabled through any service that they were in, but um, they have that certificate. I think it's a DAV-9 through mm -hmm. the veteran's office that they have to have to submit with their application. Okay. It's good, it's good to know. That way we can get it out, you yeah. know, it's, it's good. We, we, when we send out our, when we send out the tax bill, on the back of it, there, there, it lists those programs. It'll be in everyone's tax bill, uh, the senior citizen, disability and the veterans on that gives the income levels okay and then of course if they have any questions phone numbers to call on it okay so we try to get the word out on absolutely that. okay yes. okay all right thank you thank you okay. does anybody have any other? see I need to vote, vote on that you, you have anything to add Tracy no <laughs> okay I'll entertain a motion that we approve the um, the 2019 tax collections, updates, and refunds. So moved. Is there a second? Second. So, okay. Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay. Thank That's you. Unanimous. Thank you, Greg. Okay, the next item is number seven, is the request approval of budget amendments from our finance director, Julie Davis. And uh, first will be the general fund, various departments, $396,794 to appropriate additional revenues and costs through June 30th. And then the, the next one is the internal revenue. I'll let Julie explain it. So. Okay, good evening. The first one, the 396,794 is quite a, a large amount of money, but it's spread over multiple departments. As you can see everywhere from public safety, even transportation, we have a, a transportation grant from North Carolina <coughs> Department of Transportation that at the uh, beginning of the year, they told us the money was gonna be a certain amount and throughout the year, they had extra money to give us. So we're gonna be budgeting that to make sure that we're able to spend it on those transportation needs. Most of that goes to mountain projects. And then um, some of these, this is what I sometimes call cleanup at the end of the year. Um, we have a few things that we notice are running over a budget. For example, our register of deeds as we collect more and more deed stamps, we have to pay 50% of that to the state. And the revenue was coming in a little higher and so we um, are using that revenue to cover that 50% that goes to the state. And we're using um, some of that additional money over and above the 50% to help cover some of these other costs that we can use. I can, you know, if you, you can see those, I'd be glad to list them all, but in the um, interest of time, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to, to pull any of these out of here. And we're really just kind of cleaning it's up. It's mostly clean up. I will mention that I did take the, the remaining balance in contingency, which was $41,297. Most everything else had a revenue that would either directly cover it or that I could use to cover it. For example, the interest revenue 
is coming in a little bit higher, so I um, used some of that to help cover some of these additional expenses. What, 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 what was coming in higher? Interest, interest, or interest oh, that's earnings. Right. That's right. How much is that per year, do you think? It's roughly? probably going to come in close to a million dollars this year. Okay. It's been very little in the, the past few years. Right. Okay. Yeah, we talked about that in our budget setting me <clears throat> meeting, and I thought that was good to know that it, it is uh, nice to have to have that happen it yeah. sure is and I appreciate Julie recognizing that we can do that and get that so that, that saves taxpayers you know by having that coming in I think <laughs> well it, it's it, nice yeah. when it's coming in but when you're earning 0.2 percent interest there's not a whole lot you can do about <laughs> it like we yeah. have over it's not not to my credit that the interest rates are up exactly <laughs> okay okay Let's see, did, did you go over B, or do I need to do no, each? I can, I, I need to I do can, each one individually? Yes, um, we probably do, and if, okay. we, if you don't have any more questions on the first one, I'll be glad to go on to the next one. This is another large one. Hey, should I vote on this? Yeah, yeah. I'll move to approve okay. the, Sorry. the budget amendment for general fund various departments, 396,794. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Uh, okay, that's unanimous. Okay, thank ahead, you. Jim. And the next one is another large one. This is $600,000 that we're putting further money into our health insurance uh, fund because the, for some reason this year the expenses are just higher and higher. I'm not even sure that this is going to be the last time I'm going to come for this year. This is 600000 We have about 300000 sitting in the fund, and we just – got an invoice this week for about that amount. So once we pay that, we would be at zero if we didn't do this. So I'm hoping this will get us through June. But by the time we get invoices in July and sometimes in August that we have to accrue back because the services took place before June 30, um, I may have to come back again. I had no other place to take this from, so I've hit fund balance again. Um, so now our fund balance appropriation is over four million. It's four million forty-seven thousand three hundred twenty-three dollars. Does anybody have any other questions? Well, I, I know I was on vacation last week, and our county manager does a really good job about notifying us about things. And when I saw this, I I called him. <laughs> I was like, "Please tell me this is something from before the budget." that big bill we got about a week before we went live with the budget and he said I'm sorry I, I can't tell you that and you know it's just something we're dealing with uh, the bills come in we have to pay them correct I mean we do and what I didn't mention on that prior budget amendment there's a hundred thousand we're putting in here for some retiree health insurance coverage so in addition to that six that hundred of that is going toward um, health insurance for retirees yeah. okay it's a major problem this year Mm -hmm. And I've been a commissioner for, this is my 15th year, and I've never seen this, so have you, Kurt? No. Mm -hmm. No. Never yeah. had this issue. Of course, I, I mean, we have older people that we're taking care of, and I mean, more issues, and, and the issues are, um, they cost more. I mean, the bills that you receive from medical providers are just more expensive than they used to be and then you have more people who need care and this is what happens yep okay uh, the other questions or comments can okay, I entertain a motion that we approve the internal service fund health insurance 600,000 to cover the remaining claims through June 30th from the general fund balance so moved okay First, second second Okay, is it any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, is anyone opposed? Okay, that's unanimous. Okay, and then our last item is appointments, which is always one of the hardest things we have to do as commissioners, I think. And so we will request approval of appointment of one position by vote to the Haywood Community College Board of Trustees. And Brian, go ahead. I guess you'll present the ballots. I will say we had uh, some terrific choices to uh, to pick from, and this is always hard. We've had three we had three uh, candidates, and they were all uh, very 
very qualified. If you don't mind, Kevin, I'd like to add to that. I mean, our candidates were, I mean, this is getting to be a much more difficult job than it, than it used to be uh, as far as the qualification of these folks that um, are coming before the board. Um, you sit across from folks and you know that they're all smarter than you are and, uh, and you, you respect them and you're the one that has to make the decision as to which person to go on the board. It's, it's a difficult thing to do. Um, I would say, you know, the, some of the reasons for choosing the folks today was by looking at the makeup of the community college board the way it is now and some of the needs that we have in the community as far as uh, the labor force. Um, not necessarily the education of the, the applicants, but maybe uh, the certain needs that we have in the community. And so, um, I mean, sometimes we need certain people on the board. Maybe there's more educated people that we could put on a board, but we might need to have more qualified people in the area that we have the most need. And right, that, right now that is in the, you know, construction uh, field. So. Good point. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with Kirk. I mean, it's a very difficult decision. I just made my mind up just then. I mean, I've been thinking about it, but. Uh, you know, I think what you're saying is from a vocational standpoint it's where the need is, and uh, that's why I voted like I did. I mean, it's still tough, but uh, sometimes the other folks may have fit in better, but uh, having a good mix on that board, just as any, any board is, I think is important. So I think that was an excellent point. I think if we had a coin that had three sides on it, we could have flipped it up in the air. And However it landed, I think the community college board would have been well served. Those were three very, very good candidates. So, and I would say if you if you don't get elected, apply again. Yeah. Uh, uh, present yourself as plenty for, of boards. Uh, public service. So, uh, my hats off to the people that apply for these positions. Do you have anything to say? Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Mark's like me. He's speechless. Go ahead. Uh, on this and report that Lamar Daniel Wingett is the uh, highest vote getter. Well, that'll be that'll be the appointment to the HCC Board of Trustees. Okay, do we have anything else in open session at this time that I need to touch on? Okay. Okay. All right. I'll entertain a motion to enter in close into closed session for an attorney client discussion pursuant to North Carolina General Sec Section Statute Section 143-31811A3 in the case of CDR versus CARE, Haywood County, which is civil case 17 CVS 422. So moved. Second. Is there any other, I mean, uh, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay, we're in, uh, we'll be in closed session when we end with the chamber in the back. Okay, we return from closed session. And does anyone have anything else for our meeting tonight? Anything else for open session? Okay. But hearing none, I will entertain a motion that we adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Uh, okay, we're adjourned.